April has definitely been an interesting month this year. We have had a mix of really good films, a mix of really bad films, some controversial films, and some films which are just a sexual awakening. So welcome back to Film Critic Life, where we go through the monthly rundown of TV shows, films, any trailers that have been released, and any just basically gossip about the film industry. Uh, we're going to start with a couple of films that have come out this month. I It's been a bit of a meh month once again. I'm finding that we're going from a bad month, good month, bad month, good month this year. Uh, I do think the film strike has affected quite a lot and a lot of films have been pushed. So let's just get straight into it for this month. So on the 5th of April, Amazon Prime released How to Date Billy Walsh, which was... I don't really know if it was an anticipated film. I know it was based off a novel and it has quite a few stars in it that are kind of known uh, through being in Bridgerton and Heartstoppers. Amelia Brown is my universe. What up, Chuckles? Could you play some kick-ass? Final time music, please. I the cameras, Brown. The film... The film was, I, I wouldn't even say it was mediocre, I think it was below that. For me it was a one star. It seemed to be trying to have a bit of a mix between a British vibe and an American British, um, an American like, rom-com from like the 80s which obviously have got come back into trend recently. But it all just came over in a really cheesy way. Obviously, this film probably was not for my generation. It, it might, I don't know if my nieces would love it um, if you're 10, 12, 13. It just came over this very stylistic, um, but in the wrong way. It didn't really have anything original. Nothing for me to say that it was a good watch. Um, the dialogue was awful, uh, you know, things coming out of people's mouths that were so unnatural. Um, same with the jokes and punchlines and the way that things happen. Um, had this the same sort of indications as it was aware that it was a film, so it was doing things in a very clean and slick way, but it was coming over as a film or a cartoon. It, it, it just wasn't... It wasn't for me, uh, so for me, like I said, it was a one star. I want people to hear my voice. No, no, no. And just forget their troubles for five minutes. But moving on to another film that has been more controversial and talked about throughout the month. On the 12th of April, Back to Black came out. Uh, this was directed by Sam Taylor Johnson and it is based off the life of Amy Winehouse who died at the tragic age of 27. Sam Taylor Johnson was the first, um, who also created Fifty Shades of Grey series and Nowhere Boy. The film has been compared to the documentary Amy quite often. Uh, obviously it is about Amy Winehouse's life. Uh, the, the differences is obviously that one was a documentary talking to a lot of her family but this version obviously follows these um, years of her becoming a, a known artist and her a professional end. Um, it's definitely had a, a mix reviews with the portrayal by Reese, um, Marisa uh, who plays Amy. I My personal ground is that she acted it well and that she used what she was given but Amy was such a persona it was hard it's hard to not come over as a um, impression of her. Also looking at Mitch Winehouse's portrayal who was Amy Winehouse's uh, father. In the documentary a lot of people say that she he came over as quite pushy and you know if we're looking at it in a character terms about a bad a bad influence and character in the film which give, definitely gives him a more sympathetic um ideal and and reflection uh compared to the documentary you know this at the end of the day he is her father but you know there's a lot of personal grounds and debate around who he was and how he either um pushed Amy and has used her for money or if he was a caring father you know these are all 
areas that I do not know but the film overall you know it's a film biopics are just so there's so many biopics that come out and they're all a bit hit and I would say they're hit and miss but more miss for example the Bob Marley film came out earlier this year you all you wanted to do was compare it to the documentaries that have come out about this man's life and then also there is this touch um of you know should it have been made is this in, um you know a bit about the dead um she, you know like we had we've had in recent years we've had you know bohemian rhapsody and elvis we also had priscilla they all come over as either good portrayals bad portrayals you know are these should be left behind, left alone you know how long after someone's death should there be a biopic sometimes there's biopics when people are still alive look at elton john um so they are definitely a, a touchy subject and i think the best biopics that i that i won't even say are biopics are things like one life or pride which are about a, a time or um, an event rather than someone's full life. I think they have more depth and more impact and there is much more that the filmmakers can play with. Then after that we also had, we've also had challenges come out. I haven't actually been able to watch this yet because I'm basically recording this as it has just come out. Challenges came out on the 26th of April. It was directed by Luca uh, Gon... Gaglio. It was directed by Luca Gaglio, who also directed Call Me By Your Name. So you you can understand what sort of five this is going to be. It stars Zendaya, Mike Fast, and Josh O'Connor. So you know, an amazing cast. Zendaya also produced it. It is a heated story with the backdrop of this tennis. Uh, pushing love and passion of career and and sport. It's set over a numerous um, years going back and forth. Uh, the publicist um, and publicisation of this film has been fascinating. Zendaya has been wearing killer outfits, so amazing. You know, since uh, this has definitely been happening before Barbie, but I think since Barbie, we are all noticing red carpets are doing themes now. So Zendaya has been wearing so many um outfits that are to do with sport and to do with tennis and really leaning into marketing of the film that you are promoting uh where you know margot robbie used to was doing that for barbie wearing barbie outfits um like i said this is something that has been happening before i am just noticing it really head on at the moment um millie bobby brown was doing a very similar thing with damsel she was wearing a lot of corsets a lot of gorgeous dresses pearls um and like headbands. We also had the first Omen come out this month and I do want to compare it to Immaculate. I do find it very interesting that we have had two films come out by two different companies, both about a nun and basically the devil. The promotion for the first Omen has been so similar to um, Omen but also the poster is very very similar to The Exorcist and this is one thing that I did find quite interesting. The first Omen is now the sixth film in the Omen franchise, so you know this is not stopping. It is still going. It is starring like people like Bill Nye and Ralph Eisen. Actual horror, directed by um, Ariska Ariska Stephenson. But on first impressions, if you had to pick one film to watch, which was a is an American psychological film horror about a nun and the devil, I would personally watch Immaculate. Uh, I think it is giving a newer spin. It is, a, you know, it's by a younger, a younger producer, obviously, and newer directors, and it is not just coming off the back of a franchise. We have had three significant TV shows come out this month. The first was Baby Reindeer. So this is a seven-part series uh, on Netflix. It Richard uh, Glad plays himself. He plays a character called Donny, which is obviously his own personal story uh, this tv show has been everywhere i think it came out i didn't really understand any of the context behind it i only saw the trailer and a poster i mean uh and i think i was told that it was about a stalker so this therefore did not appeal to me 
But after a few days, I think I saw more and more buzz of people watching it and saying that it is a true story with Richard Glad playing himself. This is definitely an intriguing pull, uh, and I've never really seen a show do this before. The seven parts goes through the story of how he starts to be stalked, and then it starts to go through his past, and then so basically a kind of how he gets into this sort of position and how he was sympathetic to his character um to the the person who was stalking him who he calls martha in uh, this tv show baby reindeer is definitely intriguing i think even just the the, the title is doesn't give anything away and it isn't until you watch the show that you slowly understand why this name has been given the actors are incredible. Jessica Gunning, who plays Martha, is just sensational. I can see why Richard wanted her as uh, the character straight away and why he cast her off the back. But the outside experience that's been happening around Baby Reindeer, people have pretty much gone onto a witch hunt of trying to find the real Martha and the real producer who is a character within this story who has a big part. Uh, I will say there are a lot of trigger warnings for this show. There are um, sexual, there's sexual assault warnings, obviously stalker warnings, uh, um, drug use, and uh, you know, it is a a deep dive into psychology and how uh, events in your past can affect the events that happen in the future and how you end up in these situations but also there's a big thing about being a struggling um comic but obviously you can translate that into being a struggling actor being a struggling writer uh, and how you know that sort of life in london we have a whole scene at the Ed um, edinburgh fringe which i think is great to show how that sort of side of the edinburgh fringe happens uh, and you know movie reindeer i'm gonna say for me it was a 7 out of 10. Only, I did enjoy it. I do think there was an episode in the middle that I found a bit slow and I started to lose, con um, lose basically the will to watch it. I, I think there's been other shows that I think I've seen which were probably more deep, but they probably were a little bit more darker that I have watched that is just because I think I've, I watched so many shows but for the, the fact that this was on Netflix and obviously therefore so many people have watched it and it's become a talking point is very interesting and it's great to have these sort of topics in the forefront for people to discuss especially when it comes to sexual violence against men and even stalking against men I think Richard Glad has I actually don't know how he has done this writing his experience is one area but reacting it out is a complete other. So hats off to him. Uh, Fallout also have, has come out this month. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. To come up to the surface one day and restart civilization. Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? Uh, which is a drama series. Uh, science fiction drama series that was based off a game that came out in the 90s and has had many many versions uh, coming out throughout the years. It is about uh, basically humans after 200 years after a nuclear, a nuclear apocalypse um, and it's our main character is in a fault uh, so she doesn't really know much about the outside world so we then have her as our character that we start to follow and learn about the uh, the land that is America and how it has been left and how there's all these robots and ghouls and it's very very violent uh it, I going into it I didn't realize how violent it was going to be there is um a lot of fine trigger warnings but in a gruesome way such as cannibalism and just harm to other characters um to other people and very strong moral moral choices that happen and you might end up thinking someone is a villain but there might be an anti-hero because it's understandable in the environment um it's definitely had some good reviews my 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 personal review is i didn't know anything about fallout going into it 
uh, I watched it because I, you know, I wanted to watch it for this podcast and, and other people were talking about it. Um, Ella Punley is in it, who was in Yellow Jackets, and I absolutely love her. She plays our, the character of Lucy, who is our, the main character going in. The show itself, very similar to what I've just said about Raider Deer, I think that the middle episodes, I started to get bored. I think I had too many questions and nothing was being answered, so I was getting frustrated. But by the final episodes, it is kind of giving you all you need to know and it has intrigued me enough that I, I, I am looking forward to series two. Right, so let's get on to the quick rundown of all of the buzz that has happened this month. CinemaCon was our uh, CinemaCon happened earlier in the month and we got some information uh, about some of the up and coming shows that have been greenlit and that will be getting made. I am not going to talk about anything that is quite obvious, for example Morana 2 is coming out in November, things like this I'm just going to skip over just because you know they are in public, it is clear, the trailers are already out, we already know about these sort of films coming out. Uh, but some of the new stuff that is, has been announced. We are getting a Blair Witch film that is getting reworked. Uh, that is all we know currently. Now You See Me 3 has also been announced. This is going to be the OG cast. Margot Robbie also got announced to be talk, um, producing a Monopoly film. So we have her doing a The Sims film and a Monopoly film. This new era of uh, films is going to be so interesting, seeing how Margot Robbie goes forward. Obviously last year uh, we had Barbie and Saltburn by her, so I have full on faith. The Heroes TV show is getting a sequel. Uh, this is probably going to be for a niche audience. And we also got news uh, on Gladiator as a little uh, 20 minute clip was shown to audiences. This is not public currently, uh, but this is these are the main things that I have pulled that came out from CinemaCon. Trailers have also come out this month. We had the Joker 2 trailer with uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, we already knew, again, it was one of them, but we knew this was happening, but it was so uh, so interesting to see the trailer and see the concept and how this is going to go. I'm still quite leaning to the theory that Lady Gaga's hate, um, Harley Quinn might be imaginary and might not actually be a real, car um, real person and it might be all in the Joker's imagination, but until we see the film, I don't know, but it is definitely, I am looking forward to it. I don't feel like the film needed to be made, but I'm gonna have faith and trust the process until we see it. 28 Years Later, which is obviously the um, third film in the 28 days later and 28 weeks later, has uh, had a few announcements. Jodie Comer and Aaron Taylor-Johnson have been announced to be starring in it and Killian Murphy is producing. So this hype is happening. It is obviously in pre-production, so I believe because of the green light and the casting announcements, it is literally about to be made in the next few weeks. So I am kind of anticipating that we will start seeing little um, clips of it being filmed around maybe London. Uh, I don't know where it's being based or anything currently. Uh, Bridgerton also has a quite a lot uh, this month. We finally got a trailer, so we kind of finally understand the vibe. We have got definitely differences to the novel. Uh, we have got uh, obviously this series of Bridgerton is going to be about Colin and Penelope, but we have a bit of rivalry uh, with for Penelope's hand, giving Colin a bit of jealousy. It will be coming out uh, mid next month, so this will be mid May that we will get it. And we are still just getting more and more promotion. Every few days, I feel like we have got another little clip. The most recent one was about Benedict, uh, uh, Benedict Bridgerton. I think it was hinting to his storyline maybe having a bit of a start. So he, I'm really hoping that series four will be his story. 
that is pretty much this month's rundown looking forward next month we have the full guy the idea of you we obviously have bridgerton which i'm so excited about doctor who umbrella academy uh and obviously other tv shows films we do not know what hype is going to come out we do not know what gossip is going to come out but i do have another special guest for next month planned also another podcast uh episode which will not be film critic life going through everything it is going to be a new segment where i am going to interview some people from the film industry this is crew not actors so please let me know if you have any questions and i can throw them to them but that is all for this month thank you so much for listening and i'll see you again in may